CoQ10, coenzyme Q10. What is it? Should you take it? What's it got to do with statins? Statins, we said it. Welcome to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Brad. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalso. I love the name CoQ10 for a supplement. Yeah. It's so much cooler than like... Ubiquinone? Yeah, ubiquinone. <laughs> the real name? The real name. But a CoQ10 yeah. is like R2D2, C3PO. It's tech. It's good. something fancy. I'm, I'm going to be like... You want to take it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'd love to with a name like that. What are you taking? CoQ10. Yeah. What are That's, you taking? Sounds Thiamin. Like, yeah, it sounds important. Yeah. Okay, so, so we're going to talk about what it is, kind of what it does, who, what kind of people have problems with it or maybe should consider taking it, and are there any recommendations that it's going to make a difference? And specifically, if you're on a statin, and you have statin-related muscle cramps or aching, does this going to help you? Yeah, that's why I became interested in this. Just yeah, Because sure. I am on a statin, and right. I do get, I feel like I'm getting muscle aches. I you think. do? Yeah. I think age. so. It's hard to tell, though, if it's that or if it's the middle gym age. or other things. Middle age. Other things that could be causing it, like middle age. heavy duty workout. Um, anyway, so CoQ10. So coenzyme Q10 is an enzyme that it has, it plays a critical role in what's called the electron transport chain. So me energy metabolism, basically. In the mitochondria, your body's currency of energy is ATP, ATP. Yep. and this plays a critical role in the ATP pathway. And kind of moves electrons and protons, like the Uber, moves Uber electrons, electrons and protons around, yeah. helping create gradients that allow us to make ATP that can be used by other cells to do stuff. Yeah, the energy. So right. if you're thinking of CoQ10, then you're thinking of, well, what pathways will this help? It's really any cell or tissue that uses a lot of energy. It's ubiquitous. And maybe why that's, maybe that's why they named the enzyme ubiquinone. Right. It's kind of all over the place. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, so interestingly, this is, CoQ10 is a substance that our bodies make. It, yeah, that's key. You, yeah. you make it in your body. You, you, you don't rely on mm. diet to get it. No, and if you did, you would have to eat so much of all the foods that have it, yeah. it's not practical. Right. Yeah, so don't think, you know what, my CoQ10 is low, I'm gonna eat all these CoQ10 heavy foods. It doesn't really work like that. Unfortunately, no. you'd have to eat like, like 300 ounces of sardines or something. Yeah, because there's just not a ton of CoQ10 in the food we eat. That's right. Interestingly, our CoQ10 production peaks at around age 20. And like yeah. a lot of things in our lives, we start to get less efficient and we make less. So it's estimated that by age 80, we actually make 50% less. Okay. It varies. So people vary as, as, as we've seen even in our patients, not all 80 year olds look the same. So depending on your genetics, your lifestyle, a host of other factors, how much you make, it varies, but it does go down over time. Right, and Important. that's where the supplements come in. That's when, when you see something like that in life that's going down with age, then we think, oh, well, maybe if we supplement it, it'll make things better. Right, and we can talk at the end whether we think this is useful or not. Okay. So what kind of things does CoQ10 help or its deficiency lead to problems in? Like what, okay. kind of, what kind of medical conditions? Right, so if you think about cells that are using a lot of energy all the yeah. time, you think of muscle cells, right? And what, yep. one big muscle cell that's really important for us is cardiac muscle, sure, so your heart. heart. So will it help your heart? And things to do with the heart, that's heart attacks, hypertension, yep. cardiomyopathies. Heart failure, heart failure. Where your heart literally can't contract as well as it used right. to. Right, so does supplementation with CoQ10 help mitigate the problems of high blood pressure, congestive heart failure, heart attacks, that kind of stuff. No. It hasn't been proven in the literature yet. They're looking. They're, they're, it makes sense that it might, but right now there hasn't been any conclusive evidence that says it does. So I think at best, you know, you could say it might help, but if you look at like the working groups, evidence-based working groups that give us guidelines, it hasn't come on to their guidelines yet to say, yeah, take this for hypertension. There have been some studies that shows it can lower your blood pressure a little bit. Yep. Maybe it does. Try it. Yep. It's fairly safe. You can try it and see and let us know if that works for you. But there, it hasn't reached the guidelines that, yeah, take CoQ10 if you have hypertension. Something else that uses a lot of energy? Your brain. Brain. Your brain uses a ton of energy. So it has been implicated to play a role in neurodegenerative diseases and things like Parkinson's. Yeah. Again, not definitive studies, but this is an active area of research where it may provide some benefits. Yes. However, to do with the brain, yes. with migraines, yep. it has reached a recommendation, I think a level C recommendation, saying that it might help with yep. migraines. So I think it has found its way. I'm not a migraine specialist. I, and I'm not a migraine sufferer, and these people Neither unfortunately have it very difficult. But I think it has, it has made its way into the treatment protocol for migraines. So let us know if you've tried CoQ10 for migraines and if you've had any success. Okay. What else? What about the reproductive system? Reproductive system, right? Because that's a, 
energy dependent system. Uh, and so the idea is, will it help with infertility? There's been some studies that show, well, it helps with sperm motility, yep. all right? Um, but when you try and translate that to chances of getting pregnant, CoQ10 did not seem to help. So if your sperm are gonna go to sperm Olympics, it might help because it's gonna help them swim better. But yes. so far it has been proven to help get pregnant. Okay, my last one for me is kind of the skeletal muscle side of things. So loss of strength as we get older, something called yes. sarcopenia, the yeah. obligatory loss of skeletal muscle. Yes. Some people seem to think, well, it makes sense. As we get older, we get yeah. weaker, unfortunately, yes. we lose skeletal muscle. Yes. Maybe the reduction in CoQ10 plays a role. They've looked at this. I'd say the evidence is certainly not convincing at this point. No. Um, there have been some randomized trials. I saw yes. one that said, you know, it did increase uh, power output by like 2 or 3%. Right. So it's a very small amount. It seems like it should help. but Yeah, you'd think it would. Yeah. And then along the lines of muscle is those we talked about, muscle cramps with statins. Okay, so let's talk about, this is really why most people have heard of CoQ10 and mm -hmm. have considered taking it. So yeah. statins are a class of medications that are designed to reduce cholesterol. Yes. And the way it does that, it reduces an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase, and it is a key enzyme in the pathway of making cholesterol. Right. Unfortunately, along this pathway, it's the same pathway that leads, or the same enzyme that leads to some of the substrates that make CoQ10. So when you take a statin, it not only reduces your cholesterol, but it will reduce the amount of CoQ10 that you have in your body. Right. I'm on a statin. And this can lead to muscle cramping. Right. And I, I, it's hard to tell. If you're on a statin, you'll know. It's hard to tell if you're getting muscle cramping because of the statin or is it because you're exercising or doing something else. Because really studies good. show it's like 1 to 10% of people yeah, get it, this. Yeah. And, and muscle aching and pain is a very difficult thing to measure. Yep. Right? It's not like an objective measurement when you're trying to do a clinical study to determine if this exists or not. But it can be very debilitating. Yeah. It and dose dependent, so yes. a lot of people struggle and try to change their dose or change their medication to see if it's related, and then they kind of do yeah. deductive reasoning, okay, well, I stopped my statin, now my muscles feel better, maybe that was the cause. Uh, well, the evidence I reviewed, and so having said that, it's so hard to measure, so hard to determine. The yeah. studies that I read said couldn't prove that CoQ10 helped with muscle uh, aches with statins. Yeah, couldn't I saw some it. studies that said might help, and then but meta-analyses that pooled all the studies said, no, we're not sure. But anecdotally, I've spoken to people who say, yeah, it does help, so I'm going to try it. Okay, okay you know. I like that. Okay, so at the end of the day, where do we sit on CoQ10? Should everybody be taking CoQ10? No. I think, I think that's fair to say. I mean, I don't the think there's enough evidence not. to support it. No. no. If I was on a statin, I think I would consider it. If I was at someone on a statin who had muscle pains, I would consider it. Yes. Um, or if I was an older person, I think, I think I might consider taking it as an older person. A, because it's really safe. Yes. It's relatively cheap. Side effects the typical side effects of anything that you take, you know, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, that kind of stuff. But the one thing that's specific is it can interfere with a couple of your medications. It's always the blood thinners. So if yeah. you're on a blood thinner, you really have to be careful of your supplement, but yes. it can interfere with your, some of the clotting yes. pathways. Yeah, so check with your, doc, check with your healthcare provider yes. before you start taking like this, especially, especially if you're on something like Coumadin or Warfarin. Uh, it can interfere with that. If, you're, if you have diabetes, it can reduce your insulin yeah. insensitivity, so it can uh, make your blood sugar go, go down. down. So which, the, which is good, which but is good. too low is not. Yeah, and same thing with blood pressure, right? right? Because it can help your blood pressure. Right. So I think for me, who I would recommend taking, if you're a migraine sufferer, I would ask your doctor and say, hey, will this help me? Yeah. If you're on a statin, you might want to try it. Yeah. Um, and uh, if, you have, if, you, if you're just having a tough time getting your blood pressure under control and you're on mm. like over two or three medications, I think I would suggest okay. trying it personally based on what I've seen. But definitely check with your healthcare provider. And remember, there, because it does interfere with some other medications that you want to check. But overall, it's quite safe. Okay, so now you know. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel if you're not subscribed. Most people that watch aren't subscribed. We're trying to get to a million subscribers. And share it with someone that maybe you know is on a statin, has muscle cramps, is thinking about CoQ10. Uh, yeah, if, you have, uh, if you're using CoQ10 for something and you've ha found success, let us know about it. There you go. Remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.